Hey everyone, we are back with another one of our San Diego Comic-Con prep videos, this time talking swag, freebies, uh, any of those good things being given away out inside and outside of Comic-Con. So uh, we've done this video for a couple of years and uh, the landscape is always changing at San Diego Comic-Con in every way, shape and form, uh, but particularly when it comes to the freebies. I mean, this is definitely of all the areas of Comic-Con, the area that we prep the least. It really is about for us just kind of making loops around the floor and checking out booths and asking questions questions and trying to find what opportunities uh, lay out there. If people promote things ahead of time that they're gonna be giving this or that away, definitely uh, we check in on it and try to find it. But more times than not, it just comes from, you know, again, making our way around the floor, those bigger booths in the center of the uh, exhibit hall, and also asking questions. If we see somebody with something that we like, like, you know, one of these types of bags, which are always a, a big thing to us, and we'll talk about kind of the differences of swag that we kind of hunt there. You know, we might ask what booth did you get it at? Uh, and it just ranges in terms of how things are given out, what times of day and all of that. So my biggest suggestion just off the top is if you want freebies, it really just comes down to looping around the exhibit hall floor and paying attention to social media. I know we'll share things as we find them uh, constantly. If there's a freebie at a booth, I mean, we tweet anything that is decent uh, throughout the show and, and the con. And, and sometimes people trade for those things and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second here too. Now, we've talked in past videos just about kind of the cha changing landscape over the years years in terms of how swag has worked and you know a lot of times people say swags on the you know downward slide that people aren't giving things out anymore and I think it's just it's kind of changing I mean I feel like last year we had one of our best years ever in terms of freebies uh, but they were different you know the a lot of it were experienced based uh, autograph signings things like that but we still got some really good practical things too and we'll talk about kind of the differences in there but if we go back to like you know, 2010, when swag was kind of at its apex there. You know, this was a highlight in the early days for us picking up, and this is uh, from Iron Man when they were promoting Iron Man 2 at the Marvel booth. We got the golden ticket to get the poster uh, and get to meet Jon Favreau, the director, get him to sign it, all of those things. And it was really cool to be at Comic-Con at that time when everything was kind of booming big uh, and there was all sorts of giveaways everywhere you went. But at the end of the day, I think a lot of the best things were things like that, these different signing opportunities. Uh, and I don't think that's changed much. So I do think there's less t-shirts given away. There's less, you know, of those really practical good things, but they're still out there and still able to be found. And we found a lot last year. So the first thing, if you are going to try and hunt the freebies, I think it's important to just kind of divide things up and understand that there's really three things, or at least there's three that we kind of classifying there's the junk which a lot of times people say why do why does anybody want the freebies you know it's just free comic book day giveaways or you know poster tubes that you won't use and there definitely is a lot of that stuff but then there's also the practical useful items which is kind of a key thing for us and then third are kind of those almost transcendent things those experiences that we'll never forget and so on uh, and so looking at last year I mean the experiences definitely led the way and so just starting out really for us so Wednesday night we had the opportunity to go to the Star Trek screening that they did, the uh, kind of debut there with the red carpet and all that, and that was amazing. Uh, the experience of being able to see the movie with all the celebs and the orchestra playing was phenomenal all the way around, and that was, you know, something that I'll always remember about Comic-Con. It was definitely one of our highlights uh, for both Carmel and I of the 2016 convention season of the 50-some conventions we went to. Uh, but we did miss out on the floor on preview night, and so although that was a great experience, it took up a lot of time, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. But then coming into Thursday, day and uh, hitting the floor and didn't have a ton of luck in terms of what we really wanted to do with exclusives and all that but started you know fishing around and looking and Mattel was having a signing and so managed to grab a ticket and it was for a Batman the Animated Series uh, signing and this ended up being a real highlight of the convention as well so we're able to meet Paul Dini Kevin Conroy and Lauren Lester. Uh, and it was the first time I've seen all of them together in one place for a signing opportunity like that. I've seen them individually many times signing for 40, 50 bucks, but to be able to for free, get this little print here, uh, go ahead and be able to get it signed by them was really, really valuable. And so that kind of experience, you know, right away kicked off the show in a big way and was, you know, super awesome. So before we get into the rest of the experiences though of the year and kind of giving the keys there, when you're looking at the practical versus the non-practical or just kind 
kind of the junk, as people say. I mean, you do have to decide for yourself what is a value. So, I mean, for example, a few years back, picking up, they were giving these out, like, by the 10s or 20s uh, for the TV show Lost. And I really enjoyed Lost. Carmel enjoyed Lost. So we picked up a couple of the books, and what we did is we got it signed uh, once or twice that year at Comic-Con for free. And then we've taken it over the years whenever we've seen the cast places been able to get it signed. So it's a, a collectible for us. It's something that's kind of lasted. But I know for a lot of people that would be junk. Also, staying in the Lost zone, this was a little origami, silly little test paper from the Dharma Initiative that was on the floor at Comic-Con years ago. And this was something, I mean, junk to a lot of people. But to us, really loving that show, it mattered. You know, if the show you're into has something there, uh, it may seem like junk to others. The Gentle Giant trading cards, you know, they have Boba Fett last year. Love those things. A few years back, the Wayne Casino chips. I mean, if you're not a collector, what does it matter? But if you are a collector, those things can really matter and be cool. Um, we always pick up as much as we can of everything as we go. And then we figure we have nieces, nephews, neighbor kids, friends. We'll do Parks and Cons giveaways, whatever. So even if we think we may not like something, but they're going to hand you, you know, whatever, a couple comics from the DC booth that we already have, you know, these free comic book day kind of throwaways at that point, uh, we'll still pick them up and when we get home we'll decide now we do have the luxury of driving back so i mean if you're flying that's a very different scenario and you have to be much more judicious about what you're going to take but that said uh you know what's it hurt to go back to your room i mean we always leave a stash of stuff in our hotel room for the maid and for their families or kids or whatever it's extra bags we didn't need comics we didn't want whatever it might be so i don't think there's anything bad you know taking within whatever they are giving away so i don't know that there's anything that really always qualifies just as junk because it's you know junk for some and treasures for others, I guess. Uh, and so with thinking about the practical, really, these bags actually are maybe the best example of something that I'm looking for at the con, which last year Anchor Bay was giving these away. They've given them away a few years. Blood Factory's done them as well. But what's key to them, to me, is the size of the bags. We go to a lot of conventions in California now with the uh, charging for bags. These become our grocery bags, but they fit comics. Like, this is perfect size for these comics in there. And it's just so easy to carry around. Again, whether it's for groceries, sometimes we'll use them as laundry bags whatever but anchor bay anchor bay has been great for several years with those they had the ash versus evil dead and walking dead as well on the other side so they've been really cool you never know from year to year whether or not they're going to have them blood factor but we do keep an eye out for those uh as again we'll share if they if we hear anything about them but because they're really of practical use we know throughout the year we can use it i always love getting lanyards last year they were giving out suicide squad ones that was cool t-shirts are always a good thing definitely not as common these days but uh this was from the year past carmel grabbed this ant-man shirt got power rangers last year from a few spots and so those are practical things that have use you know even like bookmarks or something that uh, I'll use because I'm reading several books at a time and things like that and it's nice to have those so those things have a lot of value they definitely can be found on the floor we found them last year found them the year before etc uh, etc et now also as we're looking at kind of then back to the experiences as a collector I mean if you're watching this video there's probably some part of you that's a collector maybe not hardcore maybe a little bit maybe you dip in your toe in that arena but any of the stuff has value because it becomes nostalgia for you and so never doubt kind of the value of things. Uh, one of my favorite things, and it's such a simple little thing, but this is back from 2011 uh, when they did the Captain America screening at San Diego Comic-Con. And they're just handing out these postcards with, uh, we want you to see Captain America first. And I mean, it's such a simple throwaway thing. We saw the gas lamp just littered with these on the floor, but taking it back home and putting it in a frame that's gotten all dusty now, it's a fun thing to kind of just hang on the wall off to the side there. Now, again, a lot of experiences on the floor in terms of those types of signings and stuff. We already talked about a highlight last year. Definitely the Batman, the animated series signing was for sure one of those highlights. Uh, it was really neat over at Hasbro as well. They had for Magic the Gathering, uh, what's his name, James Wyatt. So I was not familiar with him as an artist prior, just my own uh, ignorance on the topic. But then looking into him more, digging into it as I saw that he was going to be signed, it's like, oh, wow, I totally want to meet this guy and get a signature. They also had a NASA signing there. Um, I love they have the Micronauts. Uh, the artists that worked on Micronauts in the past, uh, back in the old day, old Marvel days, and then doing the exclusive last year. I love Micronauts. They're giving out the comics there. It's funny, this comic 
Sonic would be given away free over at the Hasbro booth, or you could go spend, I think it was like five bucks, maybe 10 bucks even, over at the IDW booth. So picking it up there, then also getting it signed. Drew a ticket at Mattel, got Kevin Eastman to sign an exclusive version of this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic that IDW put out uh, in collaboration over there with the Maddie uh, booth. So we love Matt Mattel and Hasbro for their signings more than anything else. We've gotten Dave Valoni and Ashley Eckstein and a number of others uh, over the years there. Uh, A-team signing a few years back. Uh, so many different signings. Back in the old days of the CBS booth, uh, I remember walking by and LL Cool J was just like standing there having nothing to do and just got him to sign things. But Kevin Eastman, somebody we see at conventions from time to time, will be out amazing Las Vegas in a, another week here. He's always there. He has a line around the block. Super tough to get him there. And the fact they were able to just draw a ticket in like the busiest place in the world on the floor of San Diego Comic-Con and just kind of wander back and get an exclusive comic signed for free with almost no wait was really cool. And definitely the type of stuff that we like to keep an eye out for is just those exclusives experiences, you know, exclusive signings, uh, but more experiences. I mean, to me, autograph hunting is more about the experience of visiting the actor or the writer or the talent or whatever it might be, uh, whoever it is that you might be visiting there. Now, in addition to that also though in the swag, I mean, I don't think you can undervalue the experiences themselves that aren't related to any meeting anyone specifically. So I'm thinking about something like last year, the Ash vs. Evil Dead experience out in the Petco Interactive Zone. Being a haunt fan, loving haunted houses and going to a ton of them every year, being able to wander through their little haunt that they put together to tie into Ash vs. the Evil Dead was really cool. Now, at the end of it, uh, you I think they had to spin a wheel or something like that of what you were going to get as your freebie. So we got like a beer cozy. So nothing awesome there in terms of the the swag but what i love about it is the swag was the experience i love looking back at all the pictures we took in there the video we took uh, which they allowed us to in their haunt it was just a really fun walkthrough really regret not doing the mr robot uh off-site last year but i always go back and look at all of these free experiences i think experiences have a lot of value so you know if you're hunting the swag don't think about it only about the giveaways now in that zone as well though you know conan has made it kind of a, a thing of being at comic-con and Last year, we had the good fortune of being able to visit uh, and see the rec the episode that they recorded with the Suicide Squad cast, which was awesome. They gave out the Joker pop of Conan, and that was such a cool experience, and I love having that pop as like a uh, remembrance of the time. I know I'll have a lot of nostalgia for that. But even more valuable than the pop to me is just all the pictures. And we still have the TV show saved on our DVR just because it's so cool to watch. I'm like, hey, we were in the audience when they pulled all these, you know, little pranks and little jokes and saw all of that. And so, I, you know, again, they all demand time. And I think that's a really important part of the whole process of hunting swag is a lot of times people feel whether it's exclusives or swag. And if you do this a lot, meaning picking up exclusives and hunting swag, you know this is that you probably have friends who have not been to San Diego Comic Con that are like, hey, can you pick me up one of those? You know, can you pick me up that My Little Pony or that Star Wars exclusive? And my answer is always, you know, we'll try, but probably not. I mean, that's pretty much my verbatim response to anybody asking for anything. And then if I can get it, awesome. I text them right away a picture and I'm super excited about it. But if you've been to San Diego Comic-Con, you know, before you know, very few things are not big demands on time. And so you can't just wander in really and do anything, you know, as you really do have to be diligent about it. So, you know, if your thing is more panels, you're probably not going to pick up much swag. And that's not a bad deal at all because you're there for the experience of the panels. And I would look at the photos you take, the experiences, the memories, that is the swag in the panels. Don't be waiting for that fulfillment room ticket because those have really dried up over the years uh, in terms of what you get from a lot of the uh, panel rooms but it's being in the room it's getting that experience it's not about winning uh, you know that one t-shirt or whatever it might be there now in terms of the you know the booths and just the employees one thing really important to remember about everything related to San Diego Comic-Con in terms of working with the people there is that everybody there is really a temporary convention employee. And what I mean by that is they may work, you know, full time all year round at Mattel or Hasbro or whatever the booth might be. But in terms of working the floor at the King of Conventions, uh, San Diego Comic Con, this is a very part time or temporary thing. They come out and maybe they do it once a year, uh, or maybe this is the first time they've done it. Maybe they were just hired that weekend to work a couple days. And so, like employees anywhere though, they do share something in common, which is everybody just wants to do their job 
Uh, most people in general want to do a decent job and not get yelled at. Uh, people aren't, you know, vying for uh, promotions by working the booth at uh, San Diego Comic Con. They're just trying to get through the weekend. They're trying to hopefully enjoy a little bit of the off hours themselves, and they're trying to have a good time there. So be kind, ask questions, always remember, you know, they're definitely, at least in my experience, not trying to separate you from their freebies. They just want it to be simple and easy. So, you know, if you go and you want to grab a second, you know, you're, you're whatever, it's this comic and you have a son and a daughter and you're like, they would both like one. Tell them that plainly and honestly, you know, is there any way I can get two of these? Cause I know my daughter would also love it, but you know, my son also wants one and see what they say. If they say no, you know, you go get back to the line or, you know, you do what you can do. But in general, they just want to get through the weekend and not do a bad job and not get yelled at. And I find just being nice and asking questions and being very straightforward, but in a very kind and thankful way, no matter how much of a jerk they are, I always make sure to say thank you and please all the time because I'm just figuring, put yourself in their shoes. I mean, imagine being an exhibitor at San Diego Comic-Con, particularly at one of these busy places where you're giving out whatever, free key rings or posters or these chips. And all there is is like, you know, it's like Walking Dead is just hands all over in your face trying to grab things from you. And at the end of the day, they just probably want to throw all the stuff in the air and run away from it. But that's not their job. Their job is to try and be as equitable as possible give things out in a manner that is uh, respectable to people's time and you know trying to keep things so that if people come on Sunday there might still be a chance to get something but at the end of the day I mean I'm sure most of these uh, you know people giving away the swag would love just to put the box out of everything they have off the truck and walk away and go enjoy the convention for themselves so do keep that in mind I mean I think the psychology of the exhibitors of the people that are giving things away at Comic-Con is really important because as much fun as it is for attendees and it can still be overwhelming it's really overwhelming and stressful for them and they just want to get through the weekend and do the best they can in promoting whatever it is that they're there to promote. Um, now that said, if you are trying to get multiples of things because you do have people, I mean, it's come up many times where it's like, well, we want to get our niece and our nephew something and, you know, maybe Carmel's not with me. So it's just me. Dressing simply helps. I mean, if, if you are just wearing plain old clothes that don't stand out, it makes it easier to maybe get back in line even if they say it's a one per item and they're like, okay, you know, you're not rubbing my face. You're not being aggressive. You're not doing any of those things. If not, chances are they're going to hand them out the next day anyway or a little bit later that day. And just kindly, once the crowds die down, go back and ask them and say, you know what? So I got in line earlier. I wanted to get that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic for my nephew. Now I want to get one for me or whatever. Uh, go back and see, you know, do you have any idea when they're going to be giving those out? And, and see what they say there. And a lot of times they will be wanting to help you if you're wanting to, you know, be nice to them. Also remember these uh, swag items a lot of times don't have a lot of value in terms of like, they're not going to be things people are going to be selling as much on eBay, but they are things that have a lot of value in terms of memories and also in trade value is you can trade a Kevin Eastman signed comic for an exclusive. And we've done those things. We've traded tickets before, you know, a ticket to a signing we've traded for things before. So sometimes if we're really having a tough time getting the exclusives that we want that year, we'll really go to what we can get and how can we be able to trade this. And that's where, again, social media comes in really handy. Um, you know, Obviously, with my Batman the Animated Series, it has my name on it, uh, so I wouldn't have been able to probably trade this uh, very well, but I could have traded the ticket, or if I would have asked them not to put my name on it, I could have traded that straight up, and in the end, and that probably has like a $150 value without my name on it, pretty much nothing with my name on it, but with without my name on it, it would have had that value. And so maybe somebody would have traded me whatever, the Micronaut exclusive from Hasbro if I couldn't have gotten that. So it's something to consider is sometimes there's that trade value. You can always hit us up uh, on Twitter with that. We are adding this year a, fa well, we're working on it. We're adding a Facebook uh, kind of trade uh, board, if you will. And so we'll have more info as, that as we get closer to San Diego. Uh, but we always help with the WB, uh, you know, the WB bags are usually the first swag that a con goer is going to get for the weekend. A lot of times people like to trade that. We've done the WB swap, the bag swaps for many years over on Twitter there. So you can find us uh, there doing that. But in the end, you know, as with everything with Comic-Con, keep your eyes open, be dynamic, be ready to shift gears and change. If there's something that you find that you really want as a freebie that you don't get, don't worry. You'll be able to find them on eBay later. And a lot of times for not that much money. Again, to me, so much of what the swag is really more about are the experiences and the memories, which as cheesy as 
sounds are really priceless. And a lot of times the actual t-shirt, I mean, I'm sure we could get this Power Rangers t-shirt for less than 10 bucks now. So it's not that that has so much value to it. So it's rare that a swag piece has a ton of value that you wouldn't be able to pick it up six months later on eBay for a really good price there. So don't let it stress you out. Don't let it take you away from what you wanna do. That said, if you're like me, my ideal day at San Diego Comic-Con is just wandering the floor the entire time from open to close, just wandering and seeing what I can find from exclusives to swag. I just love that. Um, I, you know, I enjoy the panels. I enjoy the various, uh, other things that Comic-Con offers in terms of signings that are, you know, charged signings and things like that. But at the end of the day, where I have my most fun is just wandering. There's just so much to see on that floor. And I love collecting photos of things and just taking tons and tons of pictures of Lego displays and all sorts of toy things. So for me, swag is a really easy thing because it's not something that's just my only thought. It's just a constant wandering. And if you wander around the San Diego Comic-Con floor enough, you'll definitely run into some cool things there. It doesn't take long. So with that being said, we will have an upcoming video as we have years past with all sorts of um, breakdown of the actual floor where are some of the booths that we find most uh, you know good to hit Beth best pathways when you're first making your way into a con and all of those things so watch our YouTube channel for that also watch sdccblog.com if you are going to be keep, keeping an eye out for any of these giveaways that are announced ahead of time the one place it is certain to be is sdccblog.com San Diego Comic Con unofficial blog they catch everything those under the tent columns you know a lot of times gather up this sort of info if it is known in advance so watch for it over there so with that we are going to wrap up here for this prep video hope it helps you and either way have a great San Diego Comic Con we'll see you in our next video until next time, we'll see you in line somewhere.